the meeting with the United Nations you probably never heard about and the agreement that was made on how to protect civilians with UN troops. This was agreed three months prior to the signing of the executive order, July 1st, 2016, that allows for international troops on U.S. soil. Now, this is called the Kigali Principles, and it's the Kigali Principles on the Protection of Civilians. So how do you protect civilians in armed conflict? Well, let me give you the sales pitch that was given in this just happy pamphlet. Now, let me share a picture with you real quick. Just look at how happy they are. You know, they're just keeping the peace. They're, they're giving food and resources and water because they love everybody. And it's all about peace and love. So this is, let me scroll up also, you can see the Kigali Principles on the Protection of Civilians. Now, there's 18 different principles. It's interesting because yesterday I shared with you the 18 spells of Odin, and that number 18 is a very powerful number, numerologically speaking, then you flip it around and it's even more powerful, 81, 81. So let me share with you, though, some of the rules and regulations here. This is where it gets interesting. To train all our troops on the protection of civilians prior to their deployment of missions, to ensure that our sector and contingent commanders, as well as our nominees for mission leadership positions, have a high level of training and preparedness on peacekeeping operations, in particular, the protection of civilians. In particular, the protection of civilians. I mean, it sounds great. The sales pitch sounds fantastic, to be prepared to use for now here's where it gets not so much. Here's where the maintenance fees come out after the timeshare presentation. Oh, it looks great, man, but the maintenance fees, $1,500 a year, will they use it or not? <laughs> so to be prepared to use force to protect civilians as necessary and consistent with the mandate. Such action encompasses making a show of force as a deterrent, interpositioning our forces between armed actors and civilians, and taking direct military action against armed actors with clear hostile intent to harm civilians. So, will you just look at it? Will you just look at it? So that's where it is right there. Those are the first three mandates of the protocols here, the first three protocols. Now let's go down. Let's scroll down a little bit. Not to, there's where it gets even more in your face. Not to stipulate, I know that was really bad, not to stipulate caveats or other restrictions that prevent us from fulfilling our responsibility to protect civilians in accordance with the mandate. Hmm. To identify and communicate to the UN any resource and capability gaps that inhibit our ability to protect civilians. They want complete control. They want to be above and beyond any military, any law enforcement, any security, any rights are now underneath them. To strive within our capabilities to contribute the enabling capabilities, helicopters, to peacekeeping operations that facilitate improved civilian protection. Makes me think of the Black Hawk Down operations. Not the Black Hawk Down movie, but helicopters during the day going through the cities, skyscrapers, suburban areas, suburbans, I like suburbans, suburbs, you like a suburban? Those things are nice. They're expensive. You know the black suburbans that follow you around sometimes? Hello, because they love you so much. <laughs> the suburbs and you know, small towns, you got five, eight, 12 Black Hawk helicopters flying around, military choppers, drones flying around. I told you about the time I saw a Lockheed Martin surfaced air missile off the freeway on Highway 10. I was with my wife in the middle of nowhere, Highway 10, heading out to my grandpa's funeral a few years back. We look up and to the right, and less than 100 feet above us, to the right, there's what looks like at first a, a small jet. And my wife thought it was like a rich person, single person jet. I said, no, there's nobody in there. It was gray. It had no markings on it. It was silent. You couldn't hear it. It didn't have any fire coming out the back or anything. You know, we're going 85 on the freeway. Highway 10, you can go 85 out there. 
this thing just hangs out with us for a second. And then it goes, turns to the left, just blast past the bow, just gone. So, so you know, the, the drone capabilities, the micro drones, the, the surveillance networks, the AI software, the algorithms. We're not even getting into the, the non-biological entities that could be out there messing around with this stuff. I mean, just these levels. And, and think about what they've tapped into, ladies and gentlemen. Let's, let's divagate here for a minute. Think about what the powers that be, those in certain factions behind the scenes that want an edge over their adversaries or over anybody that might do them harm. Think about what they've tapped into, other dimensions. Think about weapons of mass destruction from other planes, literally demonic type entities or these forces of magnitude that are like something out of Stranger Things. I, I feel there's a lot more nonfiction than fiction in the series Stranger Things, and I'm really glad whoever, um, you know, the, the people that have put that series together, I think have done just an outstanding job. I need to get my Stranger Things painting and put it behind me again when the, the next season comes out. A great series, and there's just so many connections there when you look at the Black Ops stuff they do and um, causing causing a disconnect in the brain and, and, and fragmenting, literally fracturing different parts of the subconscious and conscious brain into different levels, you know, just shock and awe by creating so much fear and pain sometimes that it opens up different parts in people's brains and these different neural pathways are created that allow seriously superhuman type ability sometimes. So, Think of what they're tapping into with that. So what this, this protocol, how, how do we put this all together? These principles that are being used, the, the UN, the peacekeeper troops, peacekeeper troops, that they agreed upon these principles are asking for full control. You know, don't let, don't let the, the previous rules, laws, and protections, and, and security networks get in the way of what these guys are going to do. This is just one piece. When they drop the gauntlet, who knows what will be controlling who without them even being able to see it. This is just one piece. So they want complete control. They want to be able to use technologies, helicopters, drones, any of the resources that are already available, they want access to. It's like turning the keys over to an even more sinister faction that has cognitive dissonance, especially towards Western nations. And if there's any truth to the Deagle reports and the forecasting where they're predicting within the next seven years that Western nations, the, the population drops substantially, many of the Eastern nations and Middle Eastern nations and South Pacific, and Asia, etc., and Russia, their populations stay about the same. Some of them even go up. You look at the U.S. and Germany, and many of these westernized, uh, westernized nations, you're going to see the population. There is a huge drop in population. How did they get that? You look at the U.N. projections, and they're showing a huge increase in population around the world. Deagle is just one think tank. There's many think tanks. And there's many formulas and there's many calculations. I do find that particularly interesting, though, when you look at the numbers. So if the U.S. ends up disbanding, if our military gets thrown overseas and they're fighting in North Korea and other pockets because of these shadow factions that create these wars and these proxy wars. It's so funny because literally my mom just called me and... <laughs> I'll call her back, but I was just watching Jeff Darty, Christian Whistleblower, and his, his mom called him during the show, too. That's really bizarre. Um, CIA, Conspiracy Institute of America. Hello. But, damn, where was I even going with that? Pattern interrupt. Totally had a pattern interrupt. So, you've got these, yeah, here we go. War back into North Korea. We go into North Korea. We're in the Middle East. We're all over the place fighting these proxy wars that are being manipulated behind the scenes by these shadow factions. Our, most of our military is spread out. Then, let's say, certain things happen here at home. Like, Chicago is really pushing for United Nations to come in and help out with security work because of all the gang violence out there. 
talk about a precursor to a, you know, this, this is the beta test for these guys. If Chicago does it, Los Angeles is next. New York is next. What about D.C.? What about Seattle? What about Portland? What about Austin, Texas? What about Houston, Texas? What about San Francisco, San Diego? I was thinking of something smart, but I couldn't think of anything smart at the moment. Okay, yep, I got to check. Joking. See, there's nothing in my ear. <laughs> it's, it's crazy, guys. This is absolutely crazy right now. The UN being warned about this 27 years ago, and then throughout my childhood and teenage years being warned about this stuff by people that I shouldn't even know. Then I tell my parents about it. They literally thought like something was wrong with me. My parents had me see a psychiatrist when I told them about this stuff when I was 13, 14. And uh, <laughs> the psychiatrist is like, after I told him everything I told my parents, he's like, yeah, he's okay. He just has different political beliefs. And my parents were like, oh, okay, thanks. So very bizarre because a lot of stuff that I talked about then I see unfolding now and I've been watching unfold since I was warned about this kind of stuff. And I'm sure you guys have too. That's why you're here. It's you know, like minds kind of linked together and a lot of us think the same things. Uh, I have a, a very good friend that's a trauma nurse and she was warned about this stuff about the same time I was. She's a year younger than me. And she was literally traumatized by this stuff because of these VHS tapes that portrayed a lot of the stuff that I was warned about. So there's, there's a lot of programming there also. And then the Hollywood films, et cetera, kind of portraying these, these wars and battles and roundups, et cetera. You look at the history we've been taught with World War II. A lot of stuff in World War II, pre-World War II, is happening now just in a, a little bit of a, a different label, but similarities. So if you know what to look for, forecast, predictions, and you see all of these dots connecting, it becomes a lot more transparent on cycles are real. You know, these, these forecasts and these predictions that have been passed down from generations and taught in biblical, um, biblical texts, you know, scriptures, etc., some of the stuff that's even the, the old tablets, it all kind of links together on an underlying theme at a subconscious level. So it's absolutely incredible. So let's talk about more of these, these protocols here. And then apologize for the, uh, for the tangent there. To avoid undue delay in protecting civilians by investing our contingent commander with the authority to use force to protect civilians in urgent situations without the need for further consultations with capital. So they can do whatever they want, not to hesitate to take action to protect civilians in accordance with the rules of engagement in the absence of an effective host government response or demonstrated willingness to carry out its responsibilities to protect civilians. To demand clarity from the UN and mission leadership on our rules of engagement, including under which circumstances the use of force is appropriate, to seek to identify as early as possible potential threats to civilians and proactively take steps to, uh, to mitigate nah, 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 such threats and otherwise reduce the vulnerability of the civilian population, to seek to enhance the arrangements, the, ar the arrangements for rapid deployment, I'm getting so worked up thinking about this, including by supporting a full review of the United Nations standby arrangements, exploring a system in which earmarked units from troop and police contributing countries should be placed in readiness in order to ensure rapid troop deployment. <laughs> wow. To be vigilant in monitoring and reporting any human rights abuses or signs of impending violence in the areas in which our personnel serve. Jeez. So they want the resources, the tools, the security networks. They want access to all the, all the surveillance, all the intel, and then they don't want anybody getting in their way. Let them do their thing to protect civilians. Hmm. Number 18, noting that any well-planned mandate Implementation may be undermined by inefficient mobility, logistics, or support to call for effective support of all military plans, including a contingency plan, and to commit to work with the Secretariat to review the current support arrangements, including possible transfer of authority over more of the logistical capability to the military component 
where appropriate. So, I apologize. My reading skills, especially when I'm worked up, sometimes are lacking, oftentimes, and English isn't my first language. So, and thank you for listening. I can't wait to hear what you feel about these principles that were agreed upon two months before the executive order was passed, allowing these guys to come in here, giving them control and authority to protect civilians. Which civilians are they going to protect? Who's going to be labeled a civilian? Who's going to be labeled a threat? And going through the comments, there's a lot of comments that people, you probably shouldn't be leaving on an internet forum. And, and please don't leave any violent comments on the Leak Project channel because if I see it, it's going to be deleted. You know, use your mind. And it's easy to get triggered. I get it. It's very easy to get triggered. And wouldn't it make more sense to keep your cool and use your mind because the mind is mightier than the pen. The pen is mightier than the sword. And instead of throwing out aggressive comments that could be used against you, and take a deep breath. Realize we're, we're still in a position of strength and power by knowledge. Knowledge is key. Know about what's going on, and then you can make the right decision if you have all the information and if you've learned to use your intuition combined with the knowledge that you have. Intuition is key. So just, just think about that. Let's come up with solutions nonviolent solutions to make a difference. And, you know, if you look back through history, war has been throughout history. I get it. And have you ever noticed that during times of peace, you can get a lot more done and be a lot more effective without using violence? And to keep it at that level, there's certain things that we can do, especially if we put our minds together, to avoid violent conflict in my opinion. So there you have it. Be excellent to each other. Smile at people. <laughs> Make sure to smile at people because that could be a that can be that contagious after effect and be the change you want to see.